Hello students. How are you all doing? I hope all of you are doing really well. In this class, we are going to study a poem Rain on the Roof from your Beehive book. This poem is written by Coat Skinny. He was born on the 24th November 1826. at Keuka Lake in Aids County, New York. He died at the age of 77 on the 25th January 1904. If ever the description the man had a full life could be given to someone then that man would have to be coat skinny. Now we will see why he will be given this description. During the 19th century he was at various times a wistful and skillful poet. For a short time he was a politician. He was a lawyer in Cincinnati and worked as a journalist on several publications and newspaper. He served in the US Army during the American Civil War as a commissioned officer. Finally, he also held several school teaching posts. So there are variety of things that he had tried his hands on. And definitely he was really excelling in all of these. Now you know students why we can describe him as a man who had a full life now let's read the poem first i will read the poem and then i will explain the meaning stanza wise let's begin when the humid shadows hover over all the starry spheres and the melancholy darkness gently weeps in rainy tears What a bliss to press the pillow of a cottage chamber bed and lie listening to the patter of the soft rain overhead every tinkle on the shingles has an echo in the heart and a thousand dreamy fancies into busy being start and a thousand recollections weave their air threads into woof as i listen to the patter of the rain upon the roof now in memory comes my mother as she used in years gone to regard the darling dreamers oh she left them till the dawn oh i feel her fond look on me as i list to this refrain which is played upon the shingles by the patter of the rain this was the poem students now we will look into the meaning stanza by stanza so let's start the first stanza is when the humid shadows hover over all the starry spheres and the melancholy darkness gently weeps in rainy tears here the word humid means something which is full of moisture okay hover hover means to move around something and melancholy means sad the poet here is trying to say that humid shadows means the dark clouds which are full of water they hover or they move around the starry spheres here the starry spheres means the sky which is full of stars at that time dark clouds which are full of moisture or water move around the sky the poet here is comparing rain drops 
to the tears of the clouds. He says that melancholy darkness weeps in rainy tears, which means the dark sky, which appears to be very sad, is crying, and the raindrops are the tears of the cloud. Right? So this is the meaning of the first stanza. Now let's move and see the second stanza. What a bliss to press the pillow of a cottage chamber bed and lie listening to the patter of the soft rain overhead. Here the word bliss means happiness. Okay? And patter. Patter means sound of raindrops falling on the roof. So in this stanza, the poet says, what a bliss to press the pillow of a cottage chamber bed. Okay. So cottage chamber here means the bedroom. Okay. And these lines means that it gives a sense of happiness to the poet to press the pillow. Okay. He continues and says, it is also a bliss to lie on the bed in his room and listen to the patter of the soft rain overhead. It is a bliss. It is a happiness. Now students, what is a bliss according to the poet? Yes, very good. It is a bliss to listen to the sound which is created by the raindrops which are falling on the roof. It is a bliss to lie down on the bed when, it is rain, uh, when the rain is falling outside. It is a bliss to press the pillow. Right? So these are the things which gives him happiness. Okay. Let's see the next stanza. Every tinkle on the shingles has an echo in the heart. And a thousand dreamy fancies into busy being start. Now here, tinkle. Tinkle means short light ringing sound. Okay. Shingles. Shingles are rectangular wooden tiles used on roofs. An echo. Echo means a repeated sound. Now, I'll show you a picture of shingles so that you can clearly understand the meaning. Here you can see the rectangular tiles which are put on the roof of the house. And in the first picture, you can see students, the rain is falling on the shingles and it is making a tinkle sound. Okay, now let's understand the meaning. The poet is expressing what he feels when he hears the raindrops falling on the rooftop of his house. He says that every tinkle on the shingles has an echo in the heart. With every raindrop falling on the shingles, there is an echo, there is a repeated sound in his heart. When the poet listened to the sound of the rain falling, a thousand dreamy fancy into busy being start. This means the poet recollects various imaginary thoughts and fantasies. And not one, not two, not three, but thousands of dreamy fancies are coming into his mind. He's recollecting the thoughts and fantasies. Okay. We'll see the next stanza. And a thousand recollections weave their air threads into woof as I listen to the patter of the rain upon the roof. So here you can see the meaning of woof is, it's a weft, okay. And what is the meaning of weft? Is the thread woven across the loom. I will also show you the picture for better understanding. And patter, the word patter means the sound of raindrops falling on the roof. So you know students, you might have also heard that when raindrops fall on the roof, it makes a sound. And that sound here is called as patter. 
Now here you can see in this picture the description of weft is given. You can see, right, the you know weaving of threads into crisscross fashion. The one is called as warps and the other one is called as wefts. Now we will see the meaning of this stanza. The poet says that the sound of the rain falling on the rooftop brings back a thousand recollections in his mind. Many recollections are coming into his mind from the past. As he listens to the patter of the rain upon the roof. Like I told you in the previous stanza also, not one, not two, but thousands of recollections he is able to see. Okay? A thousand recollections weave their air threads into woof. The poet says this line. Now what is the meaning of this line? It means that the poet recollects numerous memories okay, that join together to form a beautiful picture. Just like in weaving also. You must have also seen that how the threads, a single single threads, they are woven together to form a pattern, to form a piece of cloth, right? Similarly, similarly in the case of the poet, many recollections, okay, they are being woven and it is making a beautiful picture for the poet, okay? Let's see the next stanza. Now in memory comes my mother, as she used in years agone, to regard the darling dreamers, oh, she left them till the dawn. Oh, here means, it's an old poetic word, which was used for before. So we can say or read it as, before she left them till the dawn. Okay. Dawn here means daybreak. Right? And agon. Agon is again an archaic word. Archaic word means a very old word which we don't use these days. Okay. They have gone. We don't make use of these words. And the meaning of this word agon is ago. It's an archaic word. It's a very old word. Okay. Now let's see the meaning of the stanza. Now in the memory of the poet comes his mother. The poet is reminded of how his mother used to regard or love the darling dreamers. Right? We all are also really loved by our mothers, isn't it? If someone who loves us the most, we will always say that it's our mother. So, similarly, the poet is also is reminded of his mother and how dearly, you know, she used to regard the darling dreamers. Darling dreamers here, darling uh, means children of the poet's mother. Okay. And dreamers, why dreamers? Because maybe they are sleeping, they are having a sweet dream. So, they are termed as darling dreamers. The poet is really feeling very nostalgic, okay, thinking about how his mother used to regard the dreamers before she left them to sleep till the dawn, till the sunrise or daybreak. So, the poet is really, you know, uh, uh, in, in nostalgia. He is having memories of his mother. When he listens to the rain, the, listens to the sounds of the rain falling on the roof. Ne Let's see the next stanza. Oh, I feel her fond look on me as I list to this refrain, which is played upon the shingles by the patter of the rain. List is again an old poetic word which was used for listen. So we will say as I listen to this refrain. And refrain means 
a repeated song or a poem. So what is being repeated here in this poem? The sound of the rain. Right. Now we will see the meaning of this stanza. The poet can still feel that his mother is looking at him fondly as he listens to the song made by the raindrops falling on the rooftop. The refrain or the repeated sound of the rain played by the patter of the rain upon the roof refreshes the memory of his mother and he could still feel as if she was alive. She was still, you know, looking at him very fondly and loving and caring for the darling dreamers. So students, this was the full explanation of the poem, stanza wise. I really hope that all of you have understood the meaning of the poem. But now we will see the summary of this poem so that it refreshes and you know we will see from top to bottom what the poem exactly wants to say. You know in, in a summary way we will see okay for a better understanding. In this poem so I'm starting the summary. In this poem the poet says that when the humid shadows means the dark clouds full of water hover around the starry spheres. Starry spheres refers to the sky at night time that is full of stars. The melancholy darkness gently weeps in rainy tears. The poet is comparing the raindrops to tears of the clouds as to him the dark sky seemed to be gloomy, sad. For instance, he recollects many memories of the past, which come back into his mind as dreams. Hence, he listened to the patter of the rain upon the roof. He has many new dreams in his mind. And his memories of the past come back in the form of dreams. In the last paragraph, the poet is reminded of his mother and says that in his dreams comes his mother. In the previous stanza, the poet mentioned that the rain brings memories of the past. This time, the memory was of his loving mother and how she used to regard the darling dreamers. Also, she would let him sleep until dawn and have sweet dreams. As he listens to the song made by the raindrops falling on the rooftop of his room, he feels that his mother is looking at him. So students, this was a very short summary of the poem rain on the roof now we will discuss some literary devices of the poem which are really an important part of any poem literary devices are the accessories of a poem which makes them look beautiful which makes them appear different and obviously beautiful they are they are the ornaments of a poem so we will see the important literary devices from this poem. The first literary device here is imagery. Imagery is using vivid and expressive language to create or evoke pictures or feelings. So when we were reading the poem, there are certain images which were being created in our mind, like the image of rain falling, right? The emotions of the poet when he was missing his mother, right? So there are certain images which gets created in our mind and that is called as imagery. Let's look at the second important literary device. Alliteration. 
Now, what does alliteration mean? Alliteration is defined as a poetic device in which the consonant sounds are repeated in words that appear together. As you can see in the first word, I have given the example lie listening. In this lie listening, the sound l is being repeated. Lie listening. Lie listening. So l is being repeated. So it's an alliteration. Right? Now, I have given some more examples from the poem so that you can understand in a better way. Let's see at those examples. Starry spears. So students, which sound is being repeated here? The sa sound. Yes, starry spheres. Humid hover. Ha. Ha sound is being repeated. Humid hover. Press pillow. So here, the pa sound is being repeated. So this is how we find out alliteration. One more example can be like a very popular example will be big black beer. So b b b. The sound b is repeated. Okay. Let's see the next device. The second, the third device here is personification. Personification is defined as a poetic device that involves using a human quality to describe a non-living thing or object. So here, the poet has really used personification in the uh, phrase melancholy darkness. It means a sad darkness. So a human emotion sad is attached to the word darkness. So it is a personification. And a thousand recollections weave their air threads into woof. So this is also an example of personification. Next we have onomotopia. The sound, the use of sound words to create a dramatic effect and auditory imagery. For example, patter. Patter is the use of sound word. It is a sound made by the raindrops falling on the rooftop. The second example can be tinkle. Again, it gives a sound. It gives us a feeling of sound. Okay, so that's why a tinkle, a tinkle is the gentle musical sound that a droplet makes. So these two are, these two are creating a dramatic effect, right? They're creating an auditory imagery. So these are the examples of onomatopoeia. Okay, let's see the next one. Rhyming scheme. Now rhyming. scheme Scheme is a pattern of rhyme that comes at the end of each line in a poem. Okay, so the last words of each line. The example can be sphere tear. Okay, right, you can see the rhyming sphere tear. Heart start. Again, these two words are rhyming. Woof roof. So they sound so similar to each other. So these are the rhyming words. And that is how we find out the rhyming scheme. So rhyming scheme of this poem is A, B, C, B, D, E, F, E. Okay. So these were the literary devices of the poem. Now we will discuss the questions given in your book. Let's see. First question. What do the following phrases mean to you? discuss in class so there are some phrases and we have to discuss what these mean so there are humid shadows starry spheres what a bliss a thousand dreamy fancies into busy being start a thousand recollections weave their air threads into woof so one by one we will see what they mean first one is humid shadows it refers to the dark clouds which brings rain. Okay, next one. Starry spheres. So I told you students, right? The sky which is full of stars is said to be here, the starry spheres. What a bliss. It refers to the happiness of the poet 
when he presses the pillow lying in his cottage chamber bed. Next one is a thousand dreamy fancies into busy being start. The poet starts recollecting the past and finds himself lost in imaginations and dreams. The next one, a thousand recollections weave their air threads into woof. It means that the poet recollects numerous memories that join together to form a beautiful picture. Just like in weaving, the threads are woven together to form a pattern. The next question, what does the poet like to do when it rains? When it rains, the poet likes to lie on bed in a cottage, press the pillow and, lie li and listen to the patter sound of the rain. Next question. What is the single major memory that comes to the poet's mind? Who are the darling dreamers he refers to? This question has two parts. We will see the answer. The first part, the answer will be, the poet's mother is the single major memory that comes to his mind. You remember students, right? That he is uh, really, you know, nostalgic. He's missing his mother. Darling dreamers means the poet and his siblings who are darling to poet's mother who dream while they sleep till dawn. The next question. Is the poet now a child? Is his mother still alive? No, the poet is not a child anymore and his mother is no more. But her memories still comes in his dreams. So dear students, we have come to the end of the class. I really hope that all of you have enjoyed the poem thoroughly. I also hope that this poem inspires you to make a composition of yours. And you also pen down your thoughts when it rains. So whatever comes in your mind, just jot it down. It can be a very short poem, but it will be really special because it will be your own. Right? So with these hope in my mind, I would like to conclude the class and we will meet soon in the next class. Till then, bye and take care.